Hi, it's Jack Kaluki from Nitrix, and in this video, I will illustrate how process control standards at the very core of nitrate nitrocarburizing have evolved recently. 90 years ago, an iron nitrogen diagram was introduced by Lehrer, a German metallurgist who treated thin iron foils to understand the process in atmospheres composed of ammonia and hydrogen. This diagram related temperature and nitrogen potential, allowing to accurately determine the phase boundaries in the iron-nitrogen system. Early specifications, such as AMS 27596, define control using the percentage of dissociated ammonia. Technologically, it is an easy method. The exhaust gas is trapped in a glass pipette or burette. As water is introduced in the pipette, it absorbs ammonia, leaving only dissociated ammonia composed of hydrogen and nitrogen. But how does nitriding potential control compare to the classic control by the percentage of ammonia dissociation? Ammonia dissociation follows a straight line, but the resulting nitriding potential does not. Let's say from 0 to 30% dissociation, we produce only very brittle, oversaturated nitride layers. Between 40 and 50% of dissociation, you can run many short nitriding processes with excellent results. But between 80 and 100% of dissociation, there is hardly any nitriding going on, and those are diluted atmospheres. The following table explains how nitriding potential compares to dissociation, and also why it is a much more precise method of measurement than dissociation. A major breakthrough allowed process control using nitriding potential. The latter iron nitrogen diagram was modified to incorporate curves representing constant nitrogen concentration in iron as a function of temperature and nitriding potential. This new diagram was further modified to account for shifts that happen because of the alloying elements. Where did it lead? Now, not only can we target the nitriding potential at any given temperature, but we can also predict the result in terms of microstructure and hardness. This led to a whole new specification with the nitriding potential as the reference factor for process control. The AMS 275910 specification also defines three different classes of treatments according to the maximum white layer thickness allowed in the specification. Moreover, the AMS 275910 provides the margins of acceptable error in short processes under six hours, meaning shallow case depth processes, and for long processes, when white layer control becomes a major challenge. Additionally, it says the range of nitriding potential reading error for low KN specifications under a nitriding potential of two and higher nitriding potentials. Those parameters are essential because low nitriding potentials are often used for very long and complex nitriding processes that require no white, aka compound, layer and where process control accuracy is absolutely crucial. When nitriding in those conditions, one is barely nitriding but maintains some ammonia flow and some dissociation. Ferritic nitrocarburizing process control is defined in another specification called AMS 275912. It is related to the nitriding specification but adds the notion of carburizing potential or KC. Why? Because carbon influences the phase composition and all the important properties of nitrocarburized surfaces such as wear and corrosion resistance, ductility, as well as fatigue strength. Both specifications require atmosphere analysis, sampling and automatic process control to guarantee the repetition of results. Click on the screen right now to watch another video on nitriding and nitrocarburizing. Make sure to leave a like or a comment and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.